This is question 7 from paper 3-2 from the June 2020 Cambridge International Exams. Up the top right of the screen here, you'll find a card that will bring you to a playlist that has all my solutions for all the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link in the description to an image of this question, so you can try it before looking at my solution. In this question, they give us this differential equation here, they ask us to solve it. Now that means they basically want y equals some, something in x. And um, it also tells us when x equals 0, y is equal to 2. That, that, that's because we're going to get some um, constants out when we try and solve this. So we need some information to get rid of those constants. Now, how do we do this? It's actually, we have to break it into two parts. The first thing you should be thinking when they give you a differential equation like this is get all the x's one side, all the y's one side. So let's do that. Um, we'll always leave dy on, its t on the top. We'll always need dx on the top. Because we're going to get two integrals, really. So if we move the y, the top row here, over to the left, and we'll, we'll keep the bottom row here on the right. So what we'll get then is 1 over y minus 1. That's when I move the dy. Uh, sorry, the y minus 1. We'll still have dy, and that is equal to, we'll leave this over on the right, x plus 1 and x plus 3 and the dx will appear over here. That means we can go ahead and integrate both sides and then um, that's the first part of the question. That's the first thing you need to know what to do. You need to know how to solve these simple, these ordinary differential equations. Now the left hand side of this is actually quite easy to solve. It's um, it's just a, a bottom row with nothing strange. There's no y to the power of anything. There's no constant in front of y even. So I can just straight away uh, write out the answer to this. A uh, natural log of uh, y minus 1 plus uh, some constant. I, I'll call it c1 because I'm going to have a few constants. Um, now, if, if you want to do this a little slower and put u equals y minus 1, get natural log of u and then replace u back in, um, the du dx will tell you du and dx is sorry du dy in this case will tell you du and dy are the same um, so you'll get the same answer which is an extra step or two i went quick because what interests me more is this question here now to do this question um equals will we'll do this to the side we'll have to take a little step to the side because i can't do this yet this is a bit difficult but this could be given to us as a question on its own, which is really what this question is. So how do you solve this? How do you integrate something that looks like this? The first thing we need to do, I'll, I'll take it over here. The first thing we need to do is uh, separate out x plus 1, x plus 3 into two, um, two denominators. And uh, let's see, one of them be x plus 1 and the other would be x plus 3. Now, a and b are just two, um, two constants. I don't know what they are yet. But I, I'm saying that there must, be, there must be two numbers that go here that will make this. Because if you think working backwards, if you add two fractions together, we get x uh, plus 1 times b, x plus 3 times a, and x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3. We have x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 here. So there must be some form of a and b that makes this work. So we go ahead and try and solve this. And we do that by multiplying this out here. Uh, so the le right hand side would become, let's see, a times x. Let me do this actually quite quickly. I don't have much room here. x plus 3 multiplied by a, x plus 1 multiplied by b on the top row. So I'll get all the x's together. Um, there'll be an ax and there'll be a bx. And then I'll get all the numbers together. There will be a 3a and there will be a plus b. And this is all over, we'll multiply these bottom rows here. x plus 1, x plus 3. Now look what that tells us. This side is equal to this side. This side has no x's on the top row. This one should have no x's on the top row then. That means a plus b a plus b must equal zero. I, another little aside. Um, and that also means 3a plus b, 3a plus b must equal the one that's here. So 
So we need to go ahead and solve this. Uh, let's, um, yeah, we can do this in this little box here. Let's take the bottom one minus the top one. B minus B is zero. Three A minus A is two A. One minus zero is one. So that's A is equal to a half. Um, and therefore B, let's see, if A is a half, B must be a half. Oh, sorry, if A is a half, B must be minus a half. A half plus minus a half equals zero. Let's double check it. Three halves plus another minus a half is two halves, which is one. So that's a minus one over, over two, I'm sorry. Sorry if you can't read that, minus one over two. That means A is a half, B is minus a half. That means instead of doing this integral, what if we did this one? A half over x plus one, um, I guess minus, a half over, because it was minus a half b. So I just took the minus out here. x plus three. Sorry, this is a dx and dx. This I can do, and this I can do. Each of these I can do. Now I really, uh, because of taking this separate thing out, it's really all a mess here. Uh, let me think, how much do I have left to go? Um, I have a bit left to go, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub this out here. So this was an aside, if you're doing it in an exam, I would start the question like normal, come down here, come down here, and on the left side of your page, and then I would come to the right side of the page, underneath this again, uh, let, me, let me spell that out here, because this is often confusing to people. I'd start the question here, I'd do the few lines I did here, and then if I needed to do something as an aside, I tend to do it over here. So I would have done this couple of parts here, I will do these, this part over on the right. And now I'm gonna rub this out and what I, I'm going to put here, I would, on my exam paper, I would put it here and I'd finish my answer like that. It was, it's a continuation of this. You don't need to do this. You can make the biggest mess as you want. The examiner will do the extra work and find your answer. Anyway, let me rub this out, rub this out, and we'll, we'll do these, we'll continue this question here. Okay, we've got, let me write this again, I guess. A natural log of y minus one, uh, plus some constant equals, let's start doing this. Actually, you know what, let's move this half out front. Let's move this half out front. Uh, we better leave a one to make it look normal. Um, and let's do this. Uh, this is equal to, we can integrate this. This is a half, never got touched. A natural log of x plus one. And this is minus a half natural log of x plus three. And I'm sorry, there's another constant appears, another constant appears here, plus c two, and another constant here appears plus c three. But a constant plus a constant, it's just a constant. Take this constant over there, it's just a constant. So we can actually just ignore all these and just leave one constant. Let's leave this one, let's call it big C. Just a, and one big constant. <coughs> it is important, it's, it's very important you have at least one constant here. You can have more than one, it'll make your question a bit of a mess. Uh, at the end you will have difficulty solving it, but uh, you need to realize all the constants add into one constant. But if you forget your constants, you will lose marks. All right, let's clean this up. Let's use a bit of knowledge about uh, logarithmics. Let's get natural log of y minus one plus c is equal. Okay, so a half goes into both of them anyway, that's easy enough. Um, and let's see, the, that means the natural log of x plus one divided by x plus three. That's what we use this minus for. In fact, let's take the half as well and put this to the power of a half. So that's, uh, now that's, that's outside, uh, that's inside the natural log. Um, now that allows us to do something, that allows us to get the exponential of both sides. We take the exponential of the right, e to the power of natural log y minus 1 plus c is equal e to the power of this. That just destroys it, so it's just x plus 1 over x plus 3 to the power of a half. Uh, this right hand side is e to the natural log y minus 1. In Stryger, uh, multiplied by e to the c. e to the c is just another constant. 
just another constant. So what we'll often we'll often rename this. It's okay if you leave it, but we often just rename this as a. Another constant. Any letter you want really works here. E to the power of natural log of something they destroy each other. So we're just left with what? Uh, oh, marker's going. Y minus one multiplied by a is equal, and this, uh, x plus 1 over x plus 3 to the power of a half. That's what we're nearly done. We just want y equals, remember? The problem is this a. We don't want this a. So uh, we, need, we would like to solve that at some stage. I might as well solve it now. Remember, when x equals 0, uh, y equals 2. So we can just put all that in here and find out what a is equal to. Let's see, uh, x equals 0 becomes 1 over 3, and uh, y equals 2 becomes 2 minus 1. So we're just left with a is equal to 1 over 3, the square root of 1 over 3. Uh, sorry, the square, yeah, the square root of 1 over 3. So that's what we're just left with a there. Um, let's, uh, let's put that in. I need, I need to rub out here. I need to continue this on over here. So remember, we found out a is equal to that. So y minus 1 uh, multiplied by 1 over 3 to the power of a half is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 3 to the power of a half. Uh, let's, um, let's move this. Well, let's put the half in over the 1 over 3 to make this clearer. Let's multiply both sides by 3 to the power of a half we get uh, y minus 1 is equal to 3 to the power of a half times x plus 1 over x plus 3. That's also the power of a half. We can put these together then if we want. And um, that means y is equal to 1 plus, you know, we can leave it like this, or uh, I could multiply 3 into here. So we get 3x plus 3 over x plus uh, x plus 3, all to the power of a half. And that's uh, our final answer. It's a bit of a mess of a question, a bit long, but I wouldn't say too difficult if you knew the each steps. Uh, lots of room to make mistakes, though. And you need to be very familiar with your natural logs as well. Okay, I hope that answers everyone's questions. If you do have questions, put them in the comments below. I know this is a complicated question, um, so feel free to ask anything. I will do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.